Namaste. Welcome to the next episode of Accomplished Women Speaking. You know, it all started as a weekly series. We just said that it is going to be a weekly content. Only for the first week of March, we are going to do this. But because of the overwhelming response that we are getting, and our viewers want to know more and more about accomplished women and women achievers out there. And this has pushed us further and to expand the series. And our guest today, in fact, our guest, I must say, these two women right next to me have conceptualized an idea of coupling the techniques of healing and music together. Well, <clears throat> throughout the series, I really had a bad track record of giving an awful explanation about the guest. So even some people came to me and said, dude, you better don't give any explanations. Just let the guest talk. So that is what I'm going to do now. So over to Kamakshi and Vishala Kurana, who is who are right next to me there. And Hi. they are the founders of the Sound Space. Sound space is into healing techniques which is coupled with music that is supported by musical instruments and etc. Uh, so again, I must say, I've been repeating this across all episodes that it's a pleasure having you people here with us. And uh, yeah, of course, pleasure and privilege is an understatement. So this has become the cliche statement of our accomplished women series all over. So welcome to the show. Thank you Thank so you. much for that yes. wonderful introduction Absolutely. and the work that you're doing and the women that you've been interviewing. It's, it's really amazing to see. So thank you for having us here. Thank you so much. Yeah. So I'm quickly jumping on to my question. So Kamakshi and Vishala. So was there a specific point in both of your lives that you felt this idea has to be conceptualized right now? If not now, it is not going to happen ever. Was there such a point in your life? Yes, so I think it began very much in our childhood actually because we grew up in a musical family and uh, you know we were we were basically introduced to very simple things in life through music. You know, we were put to bed listening to a lori, we woke up listening to rags, uh, we learnt our times tables in a rhythmic format. So we um, always had, we, we would sit in the evenings and instead of watching TV, we would sit together and sing together, you know. So we always had, um, uh, we were always in touch with this power of music. And as we started growing and, you know, becoming teenagers and experiencing life to another level, we started seeing how much music and sound affects our overall well-being. Like in college, you know, when people are, uh, we spend most of our college hours, uh, after college hours in music school, learning music. And, and we realized that we are the kind of people who can make a difference, who can use our art in a way that is, that can reach out to a lot of people right um, so so we thought that we should come together and just at least start experimenting and conceptualizing and when we began there was none of this work really happening around us so it was all from real life experiences that we decided what we what works what doesn't we experimented we tried it tried it tested it with multiple people across multiple ages backgrounds etc and seemed to be very happy with the results that we were getting Absolutely, and I think that you know we, um, being young, younger um, girls when we began, um, I feel like a lot of the time we had to struggle to make sure that we were being heard because you know they're young. What do they know? Kind of attitude was always there, and, and don't get us started on the whole woman angle of it all. So I think that was also a bit of a you know like there was this glass ceiling kind of um, experience where we had to prove ourselves and. Um, and I think that that has been our biggest strength because we learned so much. I think we could have been, uh, we could have passed off as being naive, nice girls. Um, but you know, the experiences and everything that we have experienced have really helped us to grow and identify how to make this thought or this emotion something that can actually be used by people around the world. And to really answer your question, I think this was an idea that was there since we were teenagers. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, it's been there for a very long time. It's, it's a long journey to kind of, you know, you think of something, you imagine it, but then you don't know what's really going to come off it. So, to really answer your question, I think this was when we realized and we saw the power of music and sound for ourselves. Really wonderful. And I believe that's not very long because you both still look very young. We'd like you to believe <laughs> Thank that. You. Thank you. We'd like everyone to keep believing that. <laughs> okay. So my next question is, so your sound healing exercises are coupled with traditional Indian instrumental music, right? So would you like to tell us what sort of instruments eases relaxation faster in that case? Because I am very curious, you know, even I attended a lot of sound healing workshops and sound healing meditation practices and you know there all I saw was piano going up and then I saw these drums going up and drums going up but you know I really didn't feel anything that is Indian anything any instruments that are Indian so going through your website I saw this that you coupled it with traditional Indian instruments so would you like to tell us more about that? Um, I don't know about Indian, but um, I can say that the one instrument that is the most powerful and that has been spoken about very little as compared to all the various instruments is the human voice. And that instrument truly has um, truly very beautiful effects. And this can be proven very practically, I'll tell you. A mother sings to her child. Whatever you sing, whether you are a trained singer or not or whatever it is, that sound has healing effects. When, it, when a woman is pregnant, you are listening to the sound of your mother's voice. You know, the baby is listening to that sound. So, the human voice and even from our personal experience has proven to be the best instrument you can have. And the lucky thing is that it's always with you. You don't need to carry it or do anything. So. Um, I don't know about Indian, yes there are multiple Indian instruments that can uh, you know, aid the process but the human voice is something that we really um, recommend and uh, encourage people to use. I'd also like to add to that, um, that yes when you do mention the Indian uh, instruments, yes we um, coming from such a rich country ourselves, we do tap into all of our resources. We feel very connected to the resources that are available in our uh, country. We have both studied uh, Hindustani classical music. Um, so, you know, we do feel and we also follow the rag chickets or, or the document that really holds all the information about rags being um, therapeutic. So while it happened in Greece with Aristotle and Plato, it also, ha- it was happening here. It's just that, you know, maybe enough people have not explored it. So we do bring in elements from our country as well, along with everything else that we um, bring into our music. So an instrument per se, I mean, every human being plays their own instrument and that instrument becomes, you know, if, if, if a, I, I cannot choose one. But you know, yeah. if you were to think so, every instrument makes a different vibrational sound, right? And it, and it works at a different frequency. And the whole premise of sound healing is that different frequencies can elicit different responses in a human mind and human body, correct? So, depending on what outcome you're looking for, you could choose the instrument um, in that sense as well. So, if you ask especially for relaxation, for example, you would pick like a sitar or a stringed instrument, it doesn't have to be Indian, it could also be like a, a, a violin possibly, that will elicit the kind of frequencies which help the body and the mind to relax. That's wonderful. Yeah. My next question. So, if someone wants to meditate, they can begin with sound healing is what I heard and I've been practicing it personally. So if the person is meditating with instrumental or acclimative music, does the person cannot meditate independently? So you know, my Reiki healer has been telling this to me. As you're beginning now, it is okay that you're using instruments and uh, some acclimative voices you're hearing and you're meditating. But you know, going forward, you must know to meditate independently. Right? So what is your opinion on that? 
so going forward if someone has to pursue meditation very seriously they shouldn't be i have something to say <laughs> so um silence is a very big part of sound as well so you're not only meditating to the sound you're meditating to the resonance of that sound and you're meditating to the silence that that comes after the that sound so yes absolutely you must be able to meditate independently as well but i don't see any harm in in fact i think the music and the sound and the silence that follows the sound actually facilitates a much better meditative experience and like our gurus uh, tell us tumhara riyaz hi meditation hai yeah so when you are doing your you know when you are practicing something where your mind is what is meditation it is about your mind having nothing right when you are singing a rag or you are practicing you are just so engrossed in that there is nothing else that is that exists for you so i think there are different people who have different theories and different ways of doing this but i definitely agree with vishala so the next question is so how different is sound healing for an average individual and someone who requires trauma rehabilitation So going through your website, I did see that you do a lot of trauma rehabilitation with your sound healing techniques. Would you like to tell us more about that? Yes. So over here, uh, we also use music as a form of therapy, in the sense, uh, you know, if if there has been uh, an accident or and and a child is unable to sort of. move or we need to get that going for the child we need to get their vocal cords functioning or we have to help with iq building these things are really important direct aspects that we have to touch upon right over here we will also use language so we will use songs we will use song writing uh, we will use call and response with rhythms so these are the various other things that we use so it's not uh, just listening to sound therapy or listening to a certain rag but also engaging with that music and engaging in order to get a response as well so when we are dealing with trauma we we really focus on bringing out a a mutual response between the 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 human being and the therapist the person who's going through whatever they are going and the person who's conducting the therapy so response is a very important aspect to that also music in general has been found to have so many far reaching effects right you you're, you're learning motor skills you're learning social skills you're even science is showing you that the left and the right brain is you know coming together converging coordinating helping you to develop so tapping into those ideas of music apart from it just being relaxing or just being uplifting which it is but also bringing in those aspects and really directing your work towards bringing that result out is something that we can do through music also like rhythm work you know uh, you know when you when you're working with rhythm right you're you're playing a rhythm and then there's a response and then you're playing a rhythm and then you leave a gap and then the then the person plays another rhythm what are these things these are engaging your left and right brain your concentration your focus so all these things come under under using music as a form of therapy so very good so uh, if individuals wish to avail your service so what is that process that they have to follow let us say that someone my neighbor is looking to do this so how can he get in touch and what is the process that they follow so we are very available on social media platforms like uh, instagram facebook our, our website has a form that you can fill in to get in touch with us uh, everything is at the sound space india and then what happens is uh, someone from our team will contact you and um, if it is an individual that needs uh, help or would like to go through the healing even as a relaxation process uh, we always sit down with that individual and take a sort of case history where we <clears throat> sorry we understand what they are looking for and how they would like us to you know uh, impact their lives what kind of result they want from it some people are looking for relaxation some people are lo- looking for stress relief some people are just looking for you know more focus or whatever it is we understand their case history and uh, and then decide the course of action going forward 
we also conduct some group sessions if someone just wants to come and experience the whole thing um often on we do keep having workshops so if someone writes to us or gets in touch with us we make sure to put them on our list and then they receive information about what's happening next sometimes it's nice to just orient yourself to what music can do right just come yeah. in for a chanting session or just come in for a you know a small baithak where you're exploring music as it is and automatically i think people realize the effect and the impact that music yes. has on the mind especially i think during this pandemic a lot of people have taken to music and uh, and sound in very many different ways for it works for them and have engaged and really felt much better the wonderful to know you know in fact day after day interviewing more women like you i'm getting more inspired to do something new and to to do something different uh you know and you people are giving benchmarks for me to decide you you people are making me to set personal benchmarks to go ahead in my life you know that's really wonderful and i'm very sure our viewers themselves too have the same experience watching your interview so thank, thank you, you so much for joining with us today so viewers let us see with another episode of accomplished women thank you